Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the second in a series of video tutorials of how to make a platform game on Unity 3D. Now, um, before we begin, still on a gaming related note, uh, I would just like to say that I started writing for a site called Twinstick. Now, if anybody remembers the old joystick site which got closed down um, a couple of weeks ago because of AOL, well, Twinstick is a site which um, has risen from the ashes of Joystick, and it's it's already pretty good. So if you have time, you want to check out some gaming-related news, uh, head on over there. The, um, the link will be in the description for this video. Now, on to our Unity tutorial. Uh, last, uh, last time, we started building our little world here, uh, piecing it together, uh, getting it to look similar to what we have here. So in this tutorial what we will be looking at is building some more of the level to connect things together. We will be adding our player which will be in the third person view. Uh, we will add some lighting and we'll look into skyboxes as well. So first thing, just have a quick recap on what we did last episode. We will take this tile here, hold control, press D to duplicate, hold control again, and pull outwards, just to match it in line with everything else. And again, we will duplicate, move along. It is just that simple, a case of duplicating and dragging outwards. And as you can see, it doesn't take too long before your world will start forming quite nicely. So as I explained in the last episode, I'm not going to bother renaming all these for now. This, like I say, this is just one way of developing a level within Unity. There are different ways, but this has been described as a sort of Minecraft kind of way, designing a level, mainly because it uses relatively simple blocking method. So we will do just a few more here. Uh, we'll put one there and to there. So now we've built this little area here. We will um, take this, duplicate, pull out, and we will transform on the y axis one. We will zoom in so we can see just how we want it. So if we slot in there and drag along, slot in there. Now we have a three gap here. So what we can either do is put in a two here and then one along here, or we can put in a three. So what we will do for this one is here in the hierarchy, we can have a quick little search and we've got edge 3 by one We will duplicate that one and move it down here. Again, rotate on the y-axis by one and just drag into position. And now we will take these two, duplicate them both and move outwards over here. So, as you can see, it's starting to take shape. We're building this section just down here at the moment. So, for now what we'll do is we will actually bring in our third person player. So down here in the asset window, down here, right click, import package, and character controller. Once you get this window, make sure everything here is ticked, selected, and click Import. It'll take just a few seconds to import. And once it's done, you'll see over here that we have our character put in. Standard assets. And here we are. Now, as you can see, there is a third person controller and a first person controller. For this one, we will be using this for now. 
I haven't entirely decided whether we're going to make a sort of a Marvel Bass clone or whether we're going to make a kind of a 3D Super Mario sort of clone. But for now, simply drag and drop to there. And as you can see, we have put that section there as our starting place for this level, which is here. So if we drag him just above, just zoom in a touch just to ensure that he is above ground. He is. So if we drag him down ever so slightly to about there. Okay, so this is our player. He is the guy we'll be using at the moment. Now if we press play, we can see our game. It's not entirely fancy. There is an animation of him moving, even though he isn't actually moving. But we can still use him for now. So back up here, press play again to stop playing the game. So what we need to do now is if we carry on building this section just here, we'll forget about putting the outside edge in for now. So if we duplicate again, pull out, duplicate, pull out, uh, duplicate, pull out. It's very, very simple as I keep saying. There's no real difficulty to it. So, as you can see, we have more of the level. And if we go back to our map, we can see we have just constructed this bit down here. So, if we duplicate this and start dragging this way, we can start creating the area on the map that has a gap, which is just here. So we have one, two, three, four squares. And here we have one, two, three, four, and this is the fifth square where we will close the gap. So, again, just piece everything together. Take as much time as you need. You can be as specific as you want. You don't have to necessarily copy what I'm doing. It is entirely up to you. So, what we will do now is we will add some lighting. So up here, game object, create other, and we will go for a point light, I think. So as you can see, the light has gone in this area. But if we pull up, you can see it's starting to take effect. But the further it goes up, the dimmer it becomes down here on the level floor. To change that, we will change the range here. Now, when you change the range upwards, it will increase the size here. So we will change it to 25 for now. As you can see, it's highlighted mainly here because this is the center of the light and it's going outwards. So if we drag further up, because we'll want it to cover quite a bit of our level, and put it to maybe 50. I think that looks okay for now. So play, you can see. Our hole works. He falls through it. So, next, what we'll do is we will um, put another light in. However, we will attach this to our player. So, game object, create other, and let's use, we'll use point light again for now. What we'll have to do this time is if we drag point light all the way up here in our hierarchy, to our third person controller. Change the local position to zero, zero, zero. 
all this does is it couples our point light we've just created with our player. So whenever our player moves, the light will move with it. Everything below this arrow and above our next item down will move along with our character. For example, if we were to add a cube to our character, the cube would also move along. So if we press play now, we can see the light is quite bright where he's standing. So we can change this. For now, we will right click here and rename, and we will call this player light. Over here, we'll change some settings. We'll change the intensity to 0 0.3. We will change the range to, let's say, 15, maybe not, maybe 5, that looks pretty okay. And I'll drag it down slightly towards the floor. Maybe we should change the intensity to 0 0.5, that looks better. Here we will select the colour. And let's put it as a a yellowy sort of colour. Yes, I think that'll do. So we press the X. Our colour is saved. So now when we press play, you can see that it's not so bad. Now you can put any colour you want at this point, it doesn't matter all too much. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm quickly going to create a little edge here. I'm not going to spend too much time creating the edge. This is this is something that you'll be able to do. You don't particularly need a, uh, a tutorial of how to duplicate things. There's no um, there's no real knack to it. It's, it's it's relatively easy. So we've got another three here, but this time I'm going to find an edge two by one, and I'll duplicate the two by one and move it over this way, like so, and it fits in quite nicely. Uh, let's see, I'll take uh, this one, duplicate, move it along, shift it, and just bring it down into place. Again, and again, and again, and again. So when you have time, you can just build up this side altogether. And what I may do is... Before the next tutorial of this series, I may build up a lot of the side around here just to cut out time so we're not wasting time in tutorials. Uh, so if you get to the next tutorial of this and you find that the level is a bit more built than what it looks like now, you haven't missed anything. I have built it up. So what I'm going to do is... If we press play, we will notice just a few things. The background is plain blue. It's rather boring. It's not great to look at. We can change that. What we'll do is here in the asset window again, right click, import package, and if we go to skyboxes. Now again, this will take just a few minutes, a few seconds rather. To import. All skyboxes are are just basically images which can be attached to the camera so there is always a background behind your playing field here. So once this is loaded I'll show you just how to put in a uh, skybox. Shouldn't be too long now. There we go. And as you can see down here there is now a folder of skyboxes. So, what I will do actually is I will change this point light here. I forgot to do this before. 
just rename this one to level 001 lighting. I'll leave it where it is in the hierarchy. So if we go to the top, to our player light here, over here in the inspector area, or as it's called at the moment, debug, add component, go to rendering, and click on skybox. And what this will do is it will add the skybox component to our player light. And as you can see, you don't need to worry about this box or this box. This custom skybox here, where it says non material, is where you attach one of these skyboxes. So let's start with this one, Sunny One. Simply a case of drag and drop. So now, when we press play to view our game, rather than have the blue background, which it's not worked because I've been a bit silly there. My apologies. Um, it is main camera. Put the skybox on, not the light. It's been a long day, folks. It's been a long day. So if we add component, skybox, and again, drag and drop. So what we added to the player light, let's pretend that never existed. Let's untick that skybox and change this to none. That is my, entirely my fault. Okay, so now we have added the component of the skybox to the main camera and we have added the skybox to the skybox component. If we click play to view our game, much better. You can see our entirely blue background has now disappeared. It has turned into our skybox. So as you can see, whenever you move around, you can see the skybox is around you at all times. Now there are many different skyboxes that you can import for free in Unity. The ones you can download off the internet if you want to, or you can make your own if you have the know-how. I don't think I'm really going to go into how to make a skybox in this tutorial. It may be for another series. So let's maybe put Starry Night to see how this one looks. Mm, not so good. It's a bit too dark, I think. Let's try Eerie. And if we press play. It's not fantastic. It's not the best at all. So maybe let's try Sunny 2. And play. I think we'll stick with this one. It looks okay. So, in this episode we've covered not too much. It's been more of a, a relaxing episode, I would say. Um, so yes, when we come to the next tutorial, like I say, if you have found that a lot more of this level is built to look more like this level, don't worry, you, you really haven't missed anything. Uh, the next episode, um, depending on whether I've decided we're going to use a man or an actual marble, we will be putting some code in. Chances are it will be C sharp. However, I am more fluent in Java, so we may end up mixing languages. It depends because things can be done simpler with C sharp, but I do feel more comfortable with Java. But say we'll see where that takes us. Uh, so I think we will leave this tutorial where it is for now. Um, one thing to remember is what I did with the player light. Just completely ignore that. Remember, you can change the colour of your player light. In fact, before we go, let's quickly change it to a red colour. Just because we can. So, we'll leave this tutorial there for now. 
Uh, like I say, next episode we may look at scripting. Uh, we'll look at building more of our level. Um, possibly next episode we'll look at putting in some uh, coins to collect or tokens or jewels or something along those lines. And uh, maybe looking at putting in a scoring system. But chances are in next tutorial we will have finished building this first level may not be the next tutorial but the one after we will look at linking uh, different scenes and what I mean by that is when you go to file and save scene it saves as a main scene so when you create a new one in the same project you're effectively creating a second level and that is what we'll be going into soon as we intend to make this game a multi-level game so uh, Thank you very much for watching and remember uh, join our Facebook page for more uh, information, regular updates, um, check out Twinstick if you want to have a look at gaming and check out our website for free assets and scripts. Hope to see you next time. Thank you very much.